Welcome to the Dr. Izzy's Medical Podcast Channel. Anemia. Anemia is a decrease in the total amount of red blood cells or hemoglobin in the blood, or a lowered ability of the blood to carry oxygen. When anemia comes on slowly, the symptoms are often vague and may include feeling tired, weakness, shortness of breath, and a poor ability to exercise. When the anemia comes on quickly, symptoms may include confusion, lightheadedness, loss of consciousness, and increased thirst. Anemia must be significant before a person becomes noticeably pale. Additional symptoms may occur depending on the underlying cause. 1. For people who require surgery, preoperative anemia can increase the risk of requiring a blood transfusion following surgery. Anemia can be caused by bleeding, decreased red blood cell production, and increased red blood cell breakdown. Causes of bleeding include trauma and gastrointestinal bleeding. Causes of decreased production include iron deficiency, vitamin B12 deficiency, thalassemia, and a number of neoplasms of the bone marrow. Causes of increased breakdown include genetic conditions such as sickle cell anemia, infections such as malaria, and certain autoimmune diseases. Anemia can also be classified based on the size of the red blood cells and amount of hemoglobin in each cell. If the cells are small, it is called microcytic anemia, if they are large, it is called macrocytic anemia, and if they are normal-sized, it is called normocytic anemia. The diagnosis of anemia in men is based on a hemoglobin of less than 13 to 14 grams per deciliter. In women, it is less than 12 to 13 grams per deciliter. Further testing is then required to determine the cause. Certain groups of individuals, such as pregnant women, benefit from the use of iron pills for prevention. Dietary supplementation, without determining the specific cause, is not recommended. The use of blood transfusions is typically based on a person's signs and symptoms. In those without symptoms, they are not recommended unless hemoglobin levels are less than 6 to 8 grams per deciliter. These recommendations may also apply to some people with acute bleeding. Erythropoiesis stimulating agents are only recommended in those with severe anemia. Signs and symptoms. Anemia goes undetected in many people and symptoms can be minor. The symptoms can be related to an underlying cause or the anemia itself. Most commonly, people with anemia report feelings of weakness or fatigue, and sometimes poor concentration. They may also report shortness of breath on exertion. In very severe anemia, the body may compensate for the lack of oxygen carrying capability of the blood by increasing cardiac output. The patient may have symptoms related to this, such as palpitations, angina, intermittent claudication of the legs, and symptoms of heart failure. On examination, the signs exhibited may include pallor, jaundice, bone deformities or leg ulcers. In severe anemia, there may be signs of a hyperdynamic circulation, tachycardia, bounding pulse, flow murmurs, and cardiac ventricular hypertrophy. There may be signs of heart failure. Pica, the consumption of non-food items such as ice, but also paper, wax, or grass, and even hair or dirt, may be a symptom of iron deficiency, although it occurs often in those who have normal levels of hemoglobin. Chronic anemia may result in behavioral disturbances in children as a direct result of impaired neurological development in infants, and reduced academic performance in children of school age. Restless leg syndrome is more common in people with iron deficiency anemia than in the general population. The causes of anemia may be classified as impaired red blood cell, RBC, production, increased RBC destruction, blood loss and fluid overload. Several of these may interplay to cause anemia. The most common cause of anemia is blood loss, but this usually does not cause any lasting symptoms unless a relatively impaired RBC production develops, in turn, most commonly by iron deficiency. Diagnosis Definitions There are a number of definitions of anemia, reviews provide comparison and contrast of them. A strict but broad definition is an absolute decrease in red blood cell mass, however, a broader definition is a lowered ability of the blood to carry oxygen. An operational definition is a decrease in whole blood hemoglobin concentration of more than two standard deviations below the mean of an age and sex matched reference range. It is difficult to directly measure RBC mass, so the hematocrit or the hemoglobin in the blood are often used instead to indirectly estimate the value. Hematocrit, however, is concentration dependent and is therefore not completely accurate. For example, during pregnancy a woman's RBC mass is normal but because of an increase in blood volume the hemoglobin and hematocrit are diluted and thus decreased. Another example would be bleeding where the RBC mass would decrease but the concentrations of hemoglobin and hematocrit initially remains normal until fluids shift from other areas of the body to the intravascular space. The anemia is also classified by severity into mild, 
110 gram per liter to normal, moderate, 80 gram per liter to 110 gram per liter, and severe anemia, less than 80 gram per liter, in adult males and adult non-pregnant females. Different values are used in pregnancy and children. Testing. Anemia is typically diagnosed on a complete blood count. Apart from reporting the number of red blood cells and the hemoglobin level, the automatic counters also measure the size of the red blood cells by flow cytometry, which is an important tool in distinguishing between the causes of anemia. Examination of a stained blood smear using a microscope can also be helpful, and it is sometimes a necessity in regions of the world where automated analysis is less accessible. In modern counters, four parameters are measured, allowing others to be calculated, and compared to values adjusted for age and sex. Some counters estimate hematocrit from direct measurements. Reticulocyte counts, and the kinetic approach to anemia, have become more common than in the past in the large medical centers of the United States and some other wealthy nations, in part because some automatic counters now have the capacity to include reticulocyte counts. A reticulocyte count is a quantitative measure of the bone marrow's production of new red blood cells. The reticulocyte production index is a calculation of the ratio between the level of anemia and the extent to which the reticulocyte count has risen in response. If the degree of anemia is significant, even a normal reticulocyte count actually may reflect an inadequate response. If an automated count is not available, a reticulocyte count can be done manually following special staining of the blood film. In manual examination, activity of the bone marrow can also be gauged qualitatively by subtle changes in the numbers and the morphology of young RBCs by examination under a microscope. Newly formed RBCs are usually slightly larger than older RBCs and show polychromasia. Even where the source of blood loss is obvious, evaluation of erythropoiesis can help assess whether the bone marrow will be able to compensate for the loss and at what rate. When the cause is not obvious, clinicians use other tests, such as, ESR, ferritin, serum iron, transferrin, RBC folate level, serum vitamin B12, hemoglobin electrophoresis, renal function tests, for example serum creatinine, although the tests will depend on the clinical hypothesis that is being investigated. When the diagnosis remains difficult, a bone marrow examination allows direct examination of the precursors to red cells, although is rarely used as is painful, invasive and is hence reserved for cases where severe pathology needs to be determined or excluded. Red blood cell size. In the morphological approach, anemia is classified by the size of red blood cells. This is either done automatically or on microscopic examination of a peripheral blood smear. The size is reflected in the mean corpuscular volume. If the cells are smaller than normal, under 80 femtoliters, the anemia is said to be microcytic. If they are normal size, around 80 to 100 femtoliters, normocytic, and if they are larger than normal, over 100 femtoliters, the anemia is classified as macrocytic. This scheme quickly exposes some of the most common causes of anemia. For instance, a microcytic anemia is often the result of iron deficiency. In clinical workup, the MCV will be one of the first pieces of information available. So even among clinicians who consider the kinetic approach more useful philosophically, morphology will remain an important element of classification and diagnosis. Limitations of MCV include cases where the underlying cause is due to a combination of factors, such as iron deficiency and vitamin B12 deficiency where the net result can be normocytic cells. Production versus destruction or loss. The kinetic approach to anemia yields arguably the most clinically relevant classification of anemia. This classification depends on evaluation of several hematological parameters, particularly the blood reticulocyte count. This then yields the classification of defects by decreased RBC production versus increased RBC destruction or loss. Clinical signs of loss or destruction include abnormal peripheral blood smear with signs of hemolysis, elevated LDH suggesting cell destruction, or clinical signs of bleeding, such as guaiac positive stool, radiographic findings, or frank bleeding. Microcytic. Microcytic anemia is primarily a result of hemoglobin synthesis failure, insufficiency, which could be caused by several etiologies. Iron deficiency anemia is the most common type of anemia overall and it has many causes. RBCs often appear hypochromic and microcytic when viewed with a microscope. Iron deficiency anemia is due to insufficient dietary intake or absorption of iron to meet the body's needs. Infants, toddlers, and pregnant women have higher than average needs. Increased iron intake is also needed to offset blood losses due to digestive tract issues, frequent blood donations, or heavy menstrual periods. Iron is an essential part of hemoglobin, and low iron levels result in decreased incorporation of hemoglobin into red blood cells. Macrocytic. Megaloblastic anemia, 
the most common cause of macrocytic anemia, is due to a deficiency of either vitamin B12, folic acid, or both. Deficiency in folate or vitamin B12 can be due either to inadequate intake or insufficient absorption. Folate deficiency normally does not produce neurological symptoms, while B12 deficiency does. Pernicious anemia is caused by a lack of intrinsic factor, which is required to absorb vitamin B12 from food. A lack of intrinsic factor may arise from an autoimmune condition targeting the parietal cells that produce intrinsic factor or against intrinsic factor itself. These lead to poor absorption of vitamin B12. Macrocytic anemia can also be caused by the removal of the functional portion of the stomach, such as during gastric bypass surgery, leading to reduced vitamin B12 folate absorption. Therefore, one must always be aware of anemia following this procedure. First, hypothyroidism. Second, alcoholism commonly causes a macrocytosis, although not specifically anemia. Other types of liver disease can also cause macrocytosis. Third, Drugs such as methotrexate, zidovudine, and other substances may inhibit DNA replication such as heavy metals. Macrocytic anemia can be further divided into megaloblastic anemia or non-megaloblastic macrocytic anemia. The cause of megaloblastic anemia is primarily a failure of DNA synthesis with preserved RNA synthesis, which results in restricted cell division of the progenitor cells. The megaloblastic anemia is often present with neutrophil hypersegmentation. Normocytic Normocytic anemia occurs when the overall hemoglobin levels are decreased, but the red blood cell size remains normal. Causes include, acute blood loss, anemia of chronic disease, aplastic anemia, which is bone marrow failure, and hemolytic anemia. Dimorphic anemia. A dimorphic appearance on a peripheral blood smear occurs when there are two simultaneous populations of red blood cells, typically of different size, and hemoglobin content. For example, A person recently transfused for iron deficiency would have small, pale, iron-deficient red blood cells, RBCs, and the donor RBCs of normal size and color. Similarly, a person transfused for severe folate or vitamin B12 deficiency would have two cell populations, but, in this case, the patient's RBCs would be larger and paler than the donor's RBCs. A person with sideroblastic anemia can have a dimorphic smear from the sideroblastic anemia alone. Heinz body anemia. Heinz bodies form in the cytoplasm of RBCs and appear as small dark dots under the microscope. Hyperanemia. Hyperanemia is a severe form of anemia, in which the hematocrit is below 10%. Refractory anemia. Refractory anemia, an anemia which does not respond to treatment, is often seen secondary to myelodysplastic syndromes. Iron deficiency anemia may also be refractory as a manifestation of gastrointestinal problems which disrupt iron absorption or cause occult bleeding. Transfusion-dependent. Transfusion-dependent anemia is a form of anemia where ongoing blood transfusion are required. Most people with myelodysplastic syndrome develop this state at some point in time. Beta-thalassemia may also result in transfusion dependence. Concerns from repeated blood transfusions include iron overload. This iron overload may require chelation therapy. Treatment. Treatment for anemia depends on cause and severity. Vitamin supplements given orally, Folic acid or vitamin B12, or intramuscularly, vitamin B12, will replace specific deficiencies. Oral iron treatment. Nutritional iron deficiency is common in developing nations. An estimated two-thirds of children and of women of childbearing age in most developing nations are estimated to have iron deficiency without anemia. One-third of them have iron deficiency with anemia. Iron deficiency due to inadequate dietary iron intake is rare in men and postmenopausal women. The diagnosis of iron deficiency mandates a search for potential sources of blood loss, such as gastrointestinal bleeding from ulcers or colon cancer. Mild to moderate iron deficiency anemia is treated by oral iron supplementation with ferrous sulfate, ferrous fumarate, or ferrous gluconate. Daily iron supplements have been shown to be effective in reducing anemia in women of childbearing age. When taking iron supplements, stomach upset or darkening of the feces are commonly experienced. The stomach upset can be alleviated by taking the iron with food. However, this decreases the amount of iron absorbed. Vitamin C aids in the body's ability to absorb iron, so taking oral iron supplements with orange juice is of benefit. In the anemia of chronic kidney disease, recombinant erythropoietin or epidin alpha is recommended to stimulate RBC production, and if iron deficiency and inflammation are also present, concurrent parenteral iron is also recommended. Injectable iron treatment. In cases where oral iron has either proven ineffective, would be too slow, or where absorption is impeded, parenteral iron preparations can be used. 
Parenteral iron can improve iron stores rapidly and is also effective for treating people with postpartum hemorrhage, inflammatory bowel disease, and chronic heart failure. The body can absorb up to 6 mg iron daily from the gastrointestinal tract. In many cases, the patient has a deficit of over 1,000 mg of iron which would require several months to replace. This can be given concurrently with erythropoietin to ensure sufficient iron for increased rates of erythropoiesis. Blood transfusions treatment. Blood transfusions in those without symptoms is not recommended until the hemoglobin is below 6 to 8 grams per deciliter. In those with coronary artery disease who are not actively bleeding transfusions are only recommended when the hemoglobin is below 7 to 8 grams per deciliter. Transfusing earlier does not improve survival. Transfusions otherwise should only be undertaken in cases of cardiovascular instability. Arthropoiesis stimulating agents. The objective for the administration of an erythropoiesis stimulating agent is to maintain hemoglobin at the lowest level that both minimizes transfusions and meets the individual person's needs. They should not be used for mild or moderate anemia. They are not recommended in people with chronic kidney disease unless hemoglobin levels are less than 10 grams per deciliter or they have symptoms of anemia. Their use should be along with parenteral iron. Hyperbaric oxygen treatment. Treatment of exceptional blood loss is recognized as an indication for hyperbaric oxygen by the Undersea and Hyperbaric Medical Society. The use of hyperbaric oxygen is indicated when oxygen delivery to tissue is not sufficient in patients who cannot be given blood transfusions for medical or religious reasons. Hyperbaric oxygen may be used for medical reasons when threat of blood product incompatibility or concern for transmissible disease or factors. Preoperative anemia treatment. An estimated 30% of adults who require non-cardiac surgery have anemia. In order to determine an appropriate preoperative treatment, it is suggested that the cause of anemia be first determined. There is moderate-level medical evidence that supports a combination of iron supplementation and erythropoietin treatment to help reduce the requirement for red blood cell transfusions after surgery in those who have preoperative anemia. Thank you for listening Dr. Izzy's medical podcast series. If you want to support this project please subscribe the channel and like this video. Thank you.